All right, so you've heard of heavy metal, what, Black Sabbath. Is ACDC heavy metal band? It's classic. Black Sabbath is definitely, then there's, no? Black Sabbath, is, what's, what's heavy metal? Kiss is, is now considered heavy metal, really? Marilyn Manson, yes, right? Isn't he like real old now? All right, so heavy metal. So when we think of heavy metal, we think of a uh, rock group with a heavy beat. But when I think of heavy, heavy metals, I don't think of Black Sabbath. I think headaches, yes. I, I think of where the metals are located on the periodic table. So, where are the metals located on the periodic table? The left side, right, of the stair-step line, the left side. What I like to call the zigzag line, the left side. So everything on the left side of the zigzag line is a metal, but not necessarily a heavy metal. Where are the non-metals located? On the right side of the zigzag line. There are four, what, what, we didn't finish, on the right side of the zigzag line. On the right side of the zigzag line. There are four metals that are essential for human health. Can, can you all, can somebody name me one? Nick, just stretching. What does she say? Say it, Nick. Iron, very good. Iron's in our what, Nick? In our blood, very good. Is there another one? Copper. Well, yes, if you were Vulcan, which is a Star Trek species, and instead of using iron, they have copper, in which case they have greenish skin. Yes, sir. Zinc is found in small amounts, but what's the other one that uh, you hear about ever since you were a little kid? Got to drink your milk. Calcium. Iron, magnesium, and potassium, magnesium and potassium, and calcium. I take magnesium, because apparently I have a little bit of a deficiency. Uh, I take magnesium. I take two tablets of magnesium. That is part of my, uh, it, it is very, very important for creating energy. And I take two tablets every night, and in the morning I get up and my uh excretions are bright bright yellow and that is a lot of the unused magnesium so if you ever get bright bright yellow there's a lot of magnesium in your excretion which you people call your your pay right your pay your urine that's right your urine how much of our daily requirements of these elements do we get from drinking water only about 10%. So we need it from our vegetables, especially our vegetables and our meats. Breads and taters are absolutely worthless to us. We need them from our green vegetables and from our meats. That's where we get most of these metals. So what are heavy metals? No, they're not Marilyn Manson. They are the more massive members of the metal family. The most massive. We use the lighter ones. Zinc, copper, small amounts of copper, magnesium, potassium, sodium. Those are the lighter metals. The heavy metals are of great concern to us. Why? Because... Our bodies are extremely intelligent, but when it comes to recognizing one metal over another, if the metal is, is, is similar enough, your body won't know the difference. For example, if you look on the periodic table back here, you'll find that calcium is very close to strontium. Strontium is much heavier 
and barium over here is much heavier. The key thing about strontium and barium is that it's found in uh, radioactive waste. So back, way back before you were born, back in the late 1980s, there was a terrible disaster in Russia called Chernobyl. And this nuclear power plant basically blew up, releasing all sorts of radioactive particles into the air. They settled down and they just got absorbed by plants. The plants were eaten by cows. And then pretty soon people were very concerned about their milk. Why? Because the cow's body could not tell the difference between radioactive barium and calcium since they're in the same family. They are so similar that your body can't tell the difference. I had a student by the name of David Svebak. He had just come over from Russia. His dad was a nuclear engineer. And even though he was not allowed to, you're not, you're not allowed to buy a Geiger counter, he was smart enough to make his own Geiger counter. So the milk that they would get in, he would check to see how radioactive it was. And several times he, they got very, very, very radioactive milk. Why? Cows don't know the difference. And then what happens is we drink the milk and our bodies don't know the difference between calcium and barium since they're so similar. And now we have radioactive barium in our bones. Why are heavy metals so uh, concerning to us? Because they can dissolve in water, just like the beneficial ones. They can be in water. These nasty ones are in our water in very, very small amounts, but they are in our water. If they get to be in large enough amounts, which is still very small, they can actually kill us. They can be very, very harmful to us. So our water treatment centers are very concerned about heavy metal contamination. So their job is to remove enough of these things so that the amounts are so small that they cannot harm us. For example, Ruben over there is drinking Gatorade. That is like 99% water. Some of that has mercury in it. That is very, very dangerous. Oh, he takes another sip because he wants more mercury in his system. All right. Why is he drinking it safely? Because even though there's mercury in there, it tastes good. That's good, Bree. That's it's really good. No, we can't taste mercury. Even though there's mercury in there, it's in such teeny weeny itsy bitsy amounts that it can't possibly hurt him. Yes. If you drank enough Gatorade, probably drinking too much Gatorade is probably more likely to hurt you than the mercury that's found in there. What are three examples of these dangerous metals? Cadmium, lead, and mercury. Of these three, which one was the one that affected the Flint River? Water, the lead. How do they harm us? They prevent the proteins in our body from working properly. And we're just made up of water, fats, and proteins. And it's our proteins that do all the work. So if it damages the way our proteins work, it's going to do bad things to us. What are some of the symptoms of heavy metal poisoning? Have you ever had any of these symptoms? Damage to the nervous system, kidneys and liver, mental retardation, and death? Have you anybody here ever been dead before because yeah. of heavy metal poisoning? <laughs> it no, does suck when that happens. That reminds me of watching commercials, pharmaceutical commercials. Is there anything more terrifying than pharmaceutical commercials when they say, hey, we can help you with your plaque psoriasis, but if you take this medicine, it can cause 
And then you're listening to it and you're going, oh my gosh. That's right. How do, we, how do they get in our bodies? They're going to be discharged from factories and car exhausts. Back about 50 years ago, there used to be lead in, the, in our gasoline. Why? Because cars run a whole lot better with lead. Our fuel efficiency was so much better. So why did we get rid of the leaded gas? Have you ever wondered why we always have to buy unleaded gas? That means at one time there was leaded gas. Actually, all gas was leaded. And the reason why we use lead was because it made it so efficient to use the fuel. We got more bang for our buck. And then they realized a lot of this lead was finding its way into the environment. It was accumulating, what? Unleaded? So it, it has never been lead anywhere. So, wow, wow. So it accumulates this lead from our exhausts. It accumulates in lakes and streams. And of course, usually what happens is you got bottom feeders like oysters and clams. And these guys, their job is to filter the water, right? They bring in the water with nutrients and little bugs and little, little uh, algae and planktons and stuff like that. And then they release it. Well, in the process of filtering the water, they will pick up some of this mercury and cadmium and lead. And then bigger fish are going to eat the oysters and get it in their system. And bigger fish will eat the fish. And then finally, you've got birds and human beings eating those fish. And we're both getting it in our system. We eat the fish and it accumulates in our body. It's okay in teeny tiny amounts. We've got heavy metals all in our bodies in small amounts. But as it accumulates, it gets to be more and more dangerous. So let's talk about the big three heavy metal bands. Lead. In what ways has lead been used? Pottery, car batteries, solder which I don't know why it's not called solder. It's not, it's not even soldier. It's solder, as if there was no L there, solder. Solder is what's going to unite two pieces of metal together. Anybody here in welding use solder for some things? Most of the time you're just what? Melting the two metals together. Do you ever use solder for anything? No? Okay, so what you guys do is you melt the metals together. But if what you're trying to do is allow the metal to still be able to conduct electricity through another metal, so you're going to unite the two metals together, and then you're going to melt the solder on it. So if you've ever seen a circuit board, have you guys seen a circuit board? On the back of the circuit board, you're going to see a bunch of little silver dots. That's solder. That's solder. Why is lead used in paint? Because it is awesome for preventing corrosion. The metal, if, especially if you're painting over a bridge or painting over a pipe, the metal doesn't corrode underneath. The metal, the, the paint also lasts a whole lot longer. Why do we not? Did you guys do it again? You just assume that I hadn't continued doing yeah. and Okay. So why don't we use lead for paint anymore? Well, eventually all paints will chip away. And if you got a little kid crawling around and they find a little piece of the wall where the paint is chipped away, Corn flakes, they'll remove the flakes, swallow it, and now they've got lead in their system. Back in the 200s, 300s, we discovered that we could uh, get lead out of rocks, and that lead was highly malleable, so we started using it for indoor plumbing. Yes, the Romans had indoor plumbing. 
if you were rich enough, you too could have a house where water ran into the house and you could actually go and do number two or number one and that water would run out of your house. If you were not rich enough, then you had public uh, toilets, which many of the public homes, public buildings would have the first floor. You would actually have like a, a bench with holes in it, a bench with holes in it. So you would be walking with your best friend down the street and go, I need to go to the restroom. So they would go to where these public places were and you would lift up your toga, you would sit down and you would do your business. Now running along in front of you was this little trough that had water running by it. So you had basically go like a little teeny tiny little stream. And to your right, you would have this clay jar with sticks and sponges. So if you did number two, what you would do is you would take the stick and put the sponge, which had been used by who knows how many hundreds of people, you would put the sponge on in on top of the stick, and then you would dip the sponge into the running water. Then you would take the sponge, you would clean yourself, and then you would put the sponge back on the stick in order to have it run through the running water in order to clean the sponge in order to continue cleaning yourself. So aren't you happy that you live in the age of indoor plumbing? I mean, can you imagine you're, you know, you're having a good time with your boyfriend or girlfriend. She says, hey, I need to go to the restroom. You follow her along and you're just sitting there and you're having a conversation and she's doing her business and you're just standing there, I guess. I don't know. I don't know, but we are so grateful for indoor plumbing, aren't we? So the Romans had indoor plumbing. Unfortunately for them, they didn't realize that if the water got too acidic, and we'll talk about acids and bases later, the lead came off and got into their drinking water. Not only that, but if you've ever watched um, movies that take place during the Middle Ages, they would have pewter mugs pewter, a metallic mug for drinking their beer. And everything was fine as long as they were drinking water. But some of their drinks would be acidic enough to allow some of the lead that was in the pewter, which I love that word, pewter. Uh, it would, there, some of those beers especially would be uh, acidic enough that it would actually dissolve some of the lead into their drink. And then you wonder why it took us 500 years to get out of the Dark Ages. Well, some historians actually believe that these rich people got dumber and dumber because of lead poisoning. What is the relation between plumbers and lead symbol? What is the name for lead in Latin, the language that the Romans would have used? Plumbum, plumbum. So the original plumbers were called plumbers because they used lead plumbum plumbum there was lead in the pipes in our country even into the 1800s what are plumbing pipes made up of these days copper or pvc if you look and you see this coppery like metal that's underneath your sink it's copper most of us are using PVC, which is a type of plastic. Timothy, do not, do not do that. Okay. Why was lead used in gas fuels? Because it produced better burning fuel, more efficient fuel. That's leaded fuels, not leaded fuels. Why was leaded fuel banned? Because the lead, as Ari would say, the lead was being released as part of the exhaust going into our atmosphere and finding its way back into the water. The EPA has a limit for lead. It is 
PPM. Who remembers what PPM stands for? Parts per... Parts per million. So they will allow five tenths, five hundredths of a part per million. Okay, so not even one molecule of lead per million, you would have to have 5% of one molecule or 0 0.05. I think that would be one part per 100 million or five parts per 100 million. That's it. Five parts per 100 million. Mercury. What is the only liquid at room temperature? Mercury. Mercury. Has anyone ever played with mercury? Not a good idea. You're okay as long as it's in the liquid form. If it gets into the vapor form or gets into your blood in the dissolved form, then you're in trouble. Why? What does the symbol HG stand for? Hydrogyrum, which is another word for liquid silver. Liquid silver. There are some rocks that you can heat up, and as you heat up, you start seeing this liquid come out of it. It's called hydrometallurgy, and we'll talk about it. Hydrogyrum, Quicksilver. You've heard of Quicksilver, the superhero? That's where we get the word, Quicksilver. We, no, we don't get it from superhero, but that's where we get the name Quicksilver. How do we use Quicksilver or Mercury? Silent light switches. If you've got an older home and the from uh, the Oak Ridge days, from the Secret City days, if you were to, and its electricity uh, electrical system has not been has not been renovated, it is very likely you have mercury in its light switch. Have you ever pull the light switch and there's like a snap and it's kind of heavy and you snap it and it's like Kang! you know what I'm talking about not a, not a soft <laughs> silent switch like this but one that's heavier and when you pull it it makes a, 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 a sharper noise do you know what I'm talking about yeah almost like a clicking sound but it's not a soft clicking sound it's more like a heavy clinking sound no, no, that one probably has mercury in the wall. Fever and weather thermometers, though, these days, most of us use digitals. Thermostats have, have a little bit of mercury in them. Street lamps, tonight, notice, not the ones that we, we've converted a lot to the uh, LED ones. Those are the ones that are kind of long and flat. I'm talking about the ones that are like globes. You look at the ones that are globes, they're either going to be blue ones that give off a bluish light or an orange ones. The orange have mercury vapors in them. The blue have mercury. I'm sorry. The orange have <laughs> sodium vapors. The blues have mercury vapors. So do not try to shoot the street lamp. By the way, all fluorescent lamps have mercury in them as well. So when I was a kid, we used to live right next to the hardware store. And uh, one of my favorite things to do was ever so often they would, uh, the fluorescent lamps uh, that were used up, they would put in these big giant bins in the, in the back right next to my house. And what I used to think was fun was smashing those fluorescent lamps. Of course, now I know that that released a lot of mercury into the atmosphere that I was breathing. So who knows how much brain damage I incurred from breaking fluorescent lamps. Do not break these fluorescent lamps. Given enough chances, yeah. In which, in which form is mercury harmful, gas or liquid? It is in the form of gas. I don't use these curly Q things. 
I do not use anymore. Do you know why? One time I went, to, we have like these globes that are really flush against the fixture. And one time there was one of these things that were supposed to last for years. You know, they started flickering, flickering, flickering. And my wife said, can you please, can you please replace that? And I wasn't thinking, but as I was bringing the globe down, I kind of tilted it in my direction. And, you know, when sometimes, of course, you can't see gases, but sometimes you breathe something in, it's like you're trying to get it out. It's, it's not good for you, and your body knows it's not good for you. When I tilted, I got a whiff of something, and it left me with a sore throat for the rest of, uh, for a couple of days after that. And I think what happened is the, this little curly Q lamp that has mercury in it, developed some kind of cracks and the mercury got into the globe and everything was okay because the globe was holding on to the mercury. And as soon as I tilted it over in my direction, the mercury flowed out and right into my face. And I breathed in enough mercury to damage some of my throat. So not good. I use the LEDs now. I do not use these mercury vapors anymore. What are some mercury compounds used for? Antiseptic. Back when I was a kid, you would lop off an arm. Your mom would come, come here. And she would say, come here, come here, come here. And then she would take this mercurochrome. Ask your grandmothers about mercurochrome. So they would take this mercurochrome and slather it on the nub that was your arm. You'd be fine. You'd be fine. So, I mean, the next day you'd be come and you'd have this great old, great old, big old red splotch there embarrassing you where there's, you know, where the nub was, where your hand was. And everyone would know you got hurt, didn't you? It's part of growing up. And then they discovered, eh, you know, maybe having mercury in an open wound is not the best idea. So now we still use it to kill fungus and to kill bugs. What is Mad Hatter's disease? Have you seen Alice in Wonderland? Okay. Uh, Mad Hatter was the guy with the hat, and he was crazy. Why do they call it Mad Hatter? Because at this time, they were, there was in the 1800s, a spate of a few years when a bunch of hatters went crazy in Europe. And what had happened is they had figured out a way of, ma of making hats much faster using mercury. Unfortunately, you've got these hatters, these people who make hats all day long, exposed to the mercury, and then pretty soon they start going nuts. And we realize, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't use mercury. That's not a good idea. So Mad Hatter's disease. During the 18th and 19th century, many hat makers became psychotic by using a mercury compound in the making of felt hats. Their symptoms were numbness, staggered walk, tunnel vision, and your favorite and mine, brain damage. Mercury concentrations in the US are very, very low. Biggest trouble is with organic mercury, which is discharged from factories. This stuff just settles in the bottom and gets picked up by oysters. Yes. <laughs> to... Okay, let me finish here. So the fish <laughs> eat the mollusks, the people eat the fish. Why do you make the face? That's okay. She's waiting for the next lecture. Are we good? All right, let's talk about cadmium. Because odds are you've probably been more exposed to cadmium than to any of the other two metals combined. Why? Cigarette smoke. So if you smoke cigarettes, or if your parents smoke cigarettes, then you probably have some cadmium in your system. What common metal is cadmium similar to? Zinc. 
and we need zinc. We need zinc. Zinc is one of our critical metals. Cadmium is not. Cadmium is used in photography. It is used to galvanize steel. Does anyone know what it means to galvanize steel? To make it rust proof. They put a layer of cadmium on the surface of the metal. It's a mixture of cadmium and other metals and it makes it rust proof. Of course, if you scratch it away, then it's going to rust. But as long as it's on there, it's not going to rust. Now, what you probably would use cadmium the most is for your cell phone batteries. Any kind of rechargeable battery is a nickel cadmium battery. And you're fine using your cell phones as long as you decide, hey, maybe I should swallow this battery. Don't swallow the battery. Don't swallow the battery. What are some of the symptoms of cadmium poisoning? Headaches. Ever had a headache? Maybe it's cadmium co uh, poisoning. Coughing. Have you coughed ever? Might have been cadmium poisoning. Vomiting. Have you ever vomited? That might have been cadmium poisoning. Okay, obviously all those three symptoms are can be explained by other things, but... One of these days, maybe you think you're catching a cold when in reality, cadmium poisoning. In what form is cadmium the most dangerous when it is inhaled? And can anyone tell me what is the number one source of cadmium inhalation? Tobacco smoke. And before you ask me, I don't know how much it's in pot but i'm pretty sure it's in there as well pot marijuana mary jane's grass weed is cadmium a big problem in u.s rivers no no drinking water has very little cadmium you're more likely to get it from secondhand or firsthand smoking Vaping, I am not sure about vaping. Vaping is just like pure calf, uh, nicotine and, and other chemicals. I don't know. What is the biggest problem with cadmium? The galvanized pipes, which we used for many, many years, for many, many years, contain small amount of cadmium that leaches into our water. So it's not the water that's coming from the treatment centers that's going to be a problem. It's going to be the water that goes into your house from your pipes. The water going into your house from your pipes.